I'm Rocio, I'm from the Bronx, I'm 25 years old, and I am a self-employed artist, jewelry designer. I guess that's, <laughs> I'm having a hard time like finding my title, you know, in life, because I don't really know, but I'm, a, I'm an artist. So for the most part, they're all self-portraits. I try to use color as a way to like brighten up a lot of the shit that I go through on a daily basis, which includes like a shit ton of anxiety, a shit ton of like intrusive thoughts, like feeling really stuck in life, using like smoking a lot of weed, you know what I mean? Just to like quiet this like really dark shit in my head. But color has always like given me peace or like allowed me to look at these dark topics. And this painting behind me isn't a good example of that because this is more like trivial. Like, yeah, we're cute girls and we're smoking weed, but like none of them look very happy, you know? I don't know, art is helping me step outside myself and like see that even though there's all this dark shit going on, like there's still color in life. If you look hard enough, there's still beauty in that weird place that I'm in. Well, art has always been something that has been natural for me. I've gotten in trouble like throughout my life in class for, for doodling and my notes, you know, and not, and not paying attention. I worked in a hair salon during college for many years and I, I was really depressed about it. And I used to draw a lot there. I don't know, I was just tired of being fucking bored, you know? I, I, I was tired of going to work and like not sitting at my desk and drawing shit. And I was like, like fuck it, let's try. So I, I made prints of some of my artwork and I went to 14th Street in between the F and the L train and I, I stood there and I ate hot Cheetos and I sold some art and I was like, oh shit, like I can make some money. And um, I don't know, now we're here. Once you find something that makes you feel better, you become a little addicted to it, you know what I mean? Like there's, I have to continue to level up because I need this shit to survive. I first started out Instagram, you know, it was just like every other girl. Like there were some selfies, there was dumb videos of me talking shit. I feel like people enjoy watching me talk shit and then they were like, oh, she also does art, cool. And then I was like, okay, let me stop, let me stop talking this shit. Let me talk less shit, you know, and push my art. And now I've been able to continue to talk my shit and make art at the same time. But I think what I did correctly on Instagram is be genuine about my feelings all the time. People know what's going on in my life for the most part, so they're able to see my artwork and understand the message and connect, you know? Because I'm telling them, like, this is how I feel. And then I'm showing this painting and they can be like, oh shit, I, I know this person in this painting because I've gone through this experience. I feel like it's really important to be yourself on Instagram because there's so many people that are just doing the same shit, you know? And we're all different. We could all be entertaining to watch. We all have very interesting things to say and create, but it's important to just be yourself. Now I make art with the intention of, I need to pay rent at the end of this month. It's no longer about like, Rocio, what are you feeling right now? What do you need to paint? It's more like, what color is in season? <laughs> like, you know what earrings, are these earrings too heavy for this girl? Or like, it's not about me anymore, which has really kind of killed my spirit a little bit. Even if you are, changing up your style or, or curating your art to a certain audience, find a way to insert your yourself in that, you know? It's definitely been very hard on me though and my art to be like, oh fuck, I'm a business now. This isn't, isn't only about me and my emotions. I am a responsible bitch. It's hard for me to get out of bed a lot of days out of the week and I won't for three of them. But on that fourth day, I'm going to be working 15 hours, you know? And I'm gonna do what I have to do. I think being an anxious person, even though it has hurt me a lot in my personal life, has really helped when it comes to like, trying to start my own business. Cause I'm always anxious like, oh shit, I have to send this person my package because I hope they don't think that like, <laughs> I don't care or I'm taking my sweet time or like, I'm really on top of my shit when I have to be. I'm really good at being like, Rocio, oh, shut up. You'll deal with this after your shift is over. Like, there's money to be made. I'd love access to manufacturing. I'd love to be like Claire's, but Rocio, you know, like I have visions of bags. I love shoes. I'd love to make shoes. I'd love to make clothes. And I, I, I see such a, a, a much bigger thing than one girl just sitting down painting a pair of earrings. You know what I mean? I hope one day to have my own store and have a whole bunch of things. I want to make refrigerators. Like I want a pink, like bedazzled refrigerator situation one day, you know, like I want everything. I think the very next step though is trying to get my stuff into stores. Like having stores buy my things, consignment at least, um, to get it outside of Instagram and into like, oh, people just walking and realizing that I exist and going to my website. You know, I'm 25 now, so a lot of the hate that I do receive, I don't try to entertain. I know that I am the shit. Listen, I, I suffer from anxiety and, and self-confidence and all this shit, but when it comes to art, like you really can't tell me nothing, right? You know, like there's room for all of us out here. There really is, like the world is fucking ginormous. I think it's really important to take into account your age and the access 
of the people around you who are going to be looking at this art. Um, when I started off selling my art, I was wondering like, why isn't this working, you know? And it's because I was trying to sell original paintings and nobody in my circle had an apartment to decorate yet, like, or the money to buy an original. But as soon as I put it on a t-shirt, it was like, oh shit, this is dope artwork and I want this t-shirt, you know what I mean? Or as soon as I started making earrings, which are way less money than an original, I think you need to find ways, finesse ways into putting your art onto things that are more accessible to the general public, you know? The moment someone buys a t-shirt with your art on and is walking around in the street, that's a walking commercial that you have. You know, the goal, I think, should be to get to the point where you are selling your originals, but not to be discouraged if that doesn't happen right off the bat. It takes a lot of thinking and trying new things. Like, I've, I used to make ashtrays. I have used to, like, paint jackets. I've done so many things. Advice I would give to find yourself or find your own art style is to stop looking at other artists for a while. Give yourself a month break and start drawing or start painting and you will find your voice. You won't be worried about what's selling or what's hot right now. And when I when I, I think when we when we say art and like authenticity, when I think about my jewelry, I'm not thinking that this it, of course it's art, but like this is this is for people. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you would think this is cute. When it comes to my paintings, nobody's opinion or feelings matter. Like those are those are genuine. Those are reflections of myself. And I hope to be noticed for that one day, like for that to be the thing that, that brings me to that next level.